It's no secret technology is advancing faster than most of us can even believe. Driverless cars, walking and talking robots, even your phone that can now unlock just by looking at you. That's the one that prompted yeah. us to go 360 on facial recognition software and just how it's being used. Here's Denver 7's Jackie Crea. Hollywood glorifies CIA-like action thrillers. The bad guys found half a world away through a tiny camera on a street light. In the Jason Bourne movies, agents sitting in Washington, D.C. find their target in Europe, and the hunt is on. In real life, though, Hollywood fantasy is becoming closer and closer to reality. Look around downtown Denver. There's cameras already everywhere. DPD uses this halo system to keep an eye on public safety. Businesses use it for security. But what no one is talking about is if it's being used to identify you. So let's go 360. Is it good? bad or just inevitable. There's a lot to be said for facial recognition technology. It's used in theme parks to help find lost children. JetBlue even tried to help speed up the boarding process. And years ago, Facebook quietly began using the technology on every uploaded photo. It deactivated it in Europe after pushback, but now it's offering an updated version to European users, telling the New York Times, quote, face recognition technology allows us to help protect you from a stranger using your photo to impersonate you, end quote. It was used to catch the Boston Marathon bombers and most recently a high-profile use in identifying the alleged shooter in the Capitol Gazette killings last month in Maryland. Local, state, and federal authorities see it as a benefit in solving crimes, and soon it will be used here in the Centennial State. Colorado Bureau of Investigations is planning to use this software called Morpho Argus, a real-time video screening system that processes faces captured in live or recorded video. That's something the Electronic Frontier Foundation, a digital rights group, has been trying to fight for a while now. Lead attorney Jennifer Lynch has testified in front of Congress. Mugshot databases include a disproportionate number of African Americans, Latinos, and immigrants, people of color will likely shoulder exponentially more of the burden of the IPS's inaccuracies than whites. It's an issue in China, too. The Chinese have already developed a vast surveillance network. Police there use glasses with facial recognition cameras attached. While they say it's been an effective use for catching criminals, others warn it targets government protesters. The ACLU agrees with those fears here in the U.S. and has asked tech and commerce giant Amazon in May to stop selling software called recognition to police departments, saying law enforcement could use the software to track and identify innocent citizens. And this is the heart of the conflict. How do you keep the community safe using technology that adds security without infringing on citizens' privacy rights? Professor Jeff Smith from UC Denver sees this as unavoidable. As citizens are more comfortable with it in their lives and the performance of these systems gets better and better. It's a delicate dance between technology and the comfort level of the public and policy. Well, policy is part of the problem. It's an example of technology outpacing the law. To date, there is no comprehensive legislation at the state or federal level to police the police when it comes to facial recognition software. Illinois and Texas have passed laws controlling its use by businesses. Back to downtown Denver. You may be wondering, how does DPD use these cameras? Well, it's without facial recognition technology. The sign makes it clear they are actively monitoring in real time and recording anyone walking down the street. I'm sure those things are recording, you know, whether or not you're jaywalking, biking on the pavement. And I don't quite feel anything at all, probably because I feel like generally I'm a law-abiding citizen. A few cities have ordinances with some oversight on using this technology. But until laws are passed, it might be up to us, pressuring companies like Amazon, police departments, and local communities to set their own limits. Five years from now, we'll be at a completely different place in terms of what facial recognition technology can accomplish. Jackie Crea, Denver 7. So to recap, some say this technology will help keep us safe, solve crimes. Others worry that facial recognition will violate our civil rights and our privacy. And there's also concern that there's no laws to keep this technology in check. Law-abiding citizens, though, say technology like this is simply inevitable. Now, 